Hello everybody. Good afternoon and welcome to the third day of National Apprenticeship Week. Uh, for those who haven't seen me just yet, my name's Heather Reynolds, I'm from Career Map, and this afternoon I am joined by the team from BAE Systems. So today's session is aimed at encouraging and supporting more females to engage in STEM careers. And the presenters today consist of both past and present apprentices across the business. And we'll be hearing how their apprenticeships have shaped their development, the skills and their career progression. And they'll also be on hand to answer any of the questions that you, you pose to them. So on that note, I would encourage you all to ask any questions that you've got um, in the chat box. Um, the session is being recorded, so don't worry about missing anything. Um, it will be emailed to you as a recording next week. And if there's anything in the immediate now that you want to, to save, I'd say take a picture on your phone. Um, but yeah, I think this is my cue to hand over to the team. Um, Fiona, I'll, I'll help with the presentation if you just want to give me directions and when to flip the, the slide. Um, and yes, I'll see you for the Q&A. Yeah, and I think we need your mic on. Sorry. <laughs> um, so what I was just saying, we're just, I'm just going to give you a little bit of an overview of BAE systems themselves and then um, more a little bit of information around the apprenticeships and how we recruit them and, and, and the process um, there. So first of all, about BAE as a business, we, um, if you just want to move on to the next slide, uh, so we are here to serve, supply and protect the people who serve and protect us. Um, we are a culture that encourages and values diversity, um, rewards integrity and merit and is a place where everyone has the opportunity to fulfil their potential, um, no matter what their background. Uh, we've got a workforce of over 90,000 people in more than 40 countries across the world and we're committed to nurturing talent and developing highly skilled colleagues and um, empowering our people to drive innovation and make right decisions to solve complex challenges. Um, yeah, I just want to go to the next one. So our apprenticeship schemes cover a variety of levels, starting at um, intermediate, advanced, higher degree, and then moving on to the undergraduate and graduate programmes. So that covers um, essentially a variety of qualification levels. Um, whether it's uh, GCSEs, which is taken on with the advanced apprenticeships or and up to A-levels and beyond with the degree and higher and obviously the undergraduate schemes. Um, so as you can see, there's people of all different backgrounds in terms of qualifications um, that we like to take on and, and, and assist with their future career growth at BAE. Okay, if you want to move on to the next slide. Um, so we have opportunities at BAE Systems throughout the UK. Um, there are some. Uh, there's a, a map, and obviously you can see from as far north as Glasgow right down to Christchurch, and um, and a variety of places in between. There are opportunities for um, apprenticeships throughout um, the UK. Yeah, if you can move on. Um, so we value, um, we uh, measure our behaviours in um, uh, uh, of what we do at BAE Systems and we use them to develop our apprentices, undergraduates and graduates, soft skill as well as their academic studies and um, career development. Um, our behaviours are, are always aligned to objectives but their expectations when approaching our curriculum as well. So there is more information about our behaviours on the internet if you want to look at those in more detail um, but that just gives you a, a brief um, overview of, of what they are. Um, yeah, if you'd like to move on to the next slide. So our application window for the Apprenticeship Programme 2022 is currently open. Um, it opened in November and it has a closing date now for applications of the 28th of February. Um, so I would encourage you to apply now or have a look at the um, 
have a look at the positions that are available to see if um, which ones uh, you're interested in and get the applications in um, as soon as possible. We recruit over 800 apprentices into 136 different vacancies and these cover engineering, business, um, supply chain, um, project management, there's a variety of, of opportunities available um, to our apprentices and these cover obviously the four levels that I mentioned earlier, the intermediate, advanced, higher and degree levels. Um, if you visit the BAE Systems Early Careers website, it contains details of all the roles available for 2022 um, and in there you will find um, uh, the location, the salary and qualify, qualification entry criteria on, on each of the positions. Okay, if you want to move on to the next slide. So just to give you a bit of an idea of the stages of the process that you will go through once you've applied for the um, apprenticeship, um, and, and, and you know the length of time and, and what we look at in order to get you through. So you submit your application through um, a platform called GTI, which is our candidate tracking system. You then would go through a qualification sift to make sure that your qualification meets the criteria that we've set out for each individual role. You will then um, be requested to do an online assessment. Um, so. And if you meet the criteria of, um, of the qualifications, you will automatically be invited to complete the online games and online demand interview. Um, the online um, games will depend on your, um, your, the apprenticeship that you've responded to. So some will obviously cover engineering, another will cover, cover more business focused um, games. You will then receive automatically receive feedback from your assessments and um, then depending on the outcome of that of successful be invited to do a live interview which is a, um, a virtual face-to-face -face interview with um, the managers of the scheme that you're uh, applying to if successful after that um, uh, you work you will go through to the office stage there that does come with conditions there is a medical check and security checks that need to be um, undertaken and at that stage they will be initiated and uh, following that you will um, we will then discuss with you start dates and when you start your employment with us that's looking at between the dates of August and October for most of the roles um, and you can find details of start dates on the website um, under the role that you're you're applying to. Uh, yeah, if you'd like to move on to the next slide. So I just want to give you a couple of dates important that are important that are coming up. So as I mentioned earlier, the closing date for the, 20, uh, for the 2022 applications is the 28th of February, which is a couple of weeks away. I would encourage you not to leave it to the last minute because obviously you want to um, you know, put in the, your best side and the best information you can. So give yourself plenty of time to make sure that you um, cover all of those um, objectives off. Uh, in March, in March, following the review of the su successful application, there will be um, a short list of progression to the next stage, um, which is when the, the successful candidates will be invited to interviews. Between March and April, so um, sort of mid, mid to end of March and the beginning of April, the interviews will take place, and then in May, you um, the successful candidates will be notified of the firm offer based on the conditions that I mentioned earlier in terms of medical and security. And then again, uh, once those security clearances and medical clearance are achieved, the apprenticeship will start um, between August and October, and in some cases, uh, January, I think we've got an intake depending on which scheme you're applying to. Um, so that's, that's just a brief overview of initially BAE systems um, and then um, how our apprentice recruitment process works. Um, as I say, you know, I would encourage you to certainly look at the apprenticeship, see, if, see it, which ones you're interested in and um, apply as soon as possible to give yourselves the best chance of securing a position with us. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Is it, um, are you okay to roll with the panel discussion now? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, good afternoon all. Thank you for those that have dialed in. It's really appreciated to come and listen to us have a little chat this afternoon regarding apprenticeships within BA systems. We'll kick it off with a brief introduction about from, from us three that are on. Um, I will start. So my name is Rachel. I was a technical apprentice within BA systems up in the northwest in our air sector, so Water and Sanctuary based. My background is primarily systems engineering and my current role is vehicle systems integration within Tempest. Um, Anise, would you like to introduce yourself, please? So my name's Anise. Um, I'm a product management first year apprentice. Um, I just finished my A-levels last year. So instead of going to uni, I started the apprenticeship. Um, I'm currently based in IMT, so it's quite technical. <laughs> Sammy? Hi there, yeah. uh, I'm Sammy. I uh, joined BAE in 2017, just after I finished my A-levels. I got onto the technical engineering apprenticeship. And then I recently finished my apprenticeship in March last year, and I am in the facilities management team. I'm currently a work service engineer for the energy team in FM. Thank you very much. Brief instructions about us. So I'll kick straight into it. Sammy, what made you choose an apprenticeship? Well, when I was in high school, I, I, I was like excited to do A levels, and then as soon as I sat down to do my A levels, I hated desk learning. I just hated it, and the thought of university like made me really anxious, and I didn't like the thought of just sitting behind a desk and being told information. So I thought, what's a, a way I can do something that's hands on, but I learn at the same time. An apprenticeship just fit into that category perfectly. So I applied for BAA, I applied for a bunch of other apprenticeships, but I was very very fortunate to get into BAA on my first go. Well done. Anise, <laughs> what made you choose? So, Sorry? Oh, well. Um, well, I knew about the company and I thought that it was obviously a really good company. So knowing what they do and who they deal with, um, I think that there's a lot of room to grow in the company. When you start from an apprenticeship, it's a lot easier to work your way up. It's quite... Um, I think it's faster to work your way up as well rather than going to uni and then after getting your degree then trying to find somewhere through a grad scheme or just trying to go straight into a job it's a lot harder and it's a lot more competitive but if you start with the company from day one then it's a lot better um, and I think that an apprenticeship's the best way to do that so Thanks. Um, I'll give you a little bit of backstory on myself. So I knew what I didn't want to do and I didn't want to go to university. I also didn't really fancy doing A-levels. However, because of my location and where our training academy was at the time, I couldn't get to work if I was to start at 16. So I did have to go to college. I went to college for two years and I did a BSET National Diploma, perfect entry requirements into our apprenticeship schemes. And then I managed to join at 18 when I could drive. How I found I could narrow it down was I knew I didn't really fancy being in a learning a completely learning environment I wanted to have an experience of working I wanted to earn a bit of money I didn't have to pay much so an apprenticeship from my perspective is you do have the the cheesy saying of you earn while you learn you absolutely do because you still carry on with your further and your higher education you just don't have to take four years out to do it luckily we're fortunate enough that our company does do sponsorship further education higher education which is absolutely fantastic and Sometimes you don't have to know what you want to do, but it helps to know what you don't want to do because it still helps you make them sort of decisions. I don't know if it's the same for yourselves, but I've, I've genuinely never looked back and it's, it's been amazing. <laughs> <I'm a neighbor. laughs> um, Anise, can you tell me your typical day? What, what would you do on a um, typical day? So usually when I'm in the office, um, there's a lot of stuff going on. So I might just get pulled into one of my manager's projects. Uh, someone on the team, they might need some help, so they'll call me in. Um, there's uh, lots of different projects that are going on. So that might involve speaking to contractors um, and speaking to different stakeholders, um, Skype calls, um, some you might do a bit of spreadsheets but it really depends on where your placement is um you can do things like some placements you and you can go on uh, different ships or you can go and do more in-person work whereas some people's placements are more working from home so it really depends on what placement that you get put into but um i'm more 
in the office um sort of helping and learning with my team thanks sammy what do you do day to day so because i'm in the facilities management team i have to be on site quite a lot i'm not today fortunately but um i usually spend a lot of my time in meetings with contractors who do a lot of the manual work on site but at the minute because i'm in the energy team i um uh, I'm doing a lot of research on carbon net zero, which is a goal for BAE to reach carbon net zero, which means that we emit little to no carbon in our production process. So I'm doing a lot of research to do with that. And uh, we're having a lot of meetings with uh, contractors to uh, basically get the ball rolling on saving energy as much as we can on site. So that's a lot of my day to day at the minute. Sounds well, really interesting. I like <laughs> it is really interesting, I... yeah. <laughs> it's always interesting when it's not your job. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Not, bit not too much just because of the projects that I'm currently working on. But a typical day when I wasn't on Tempest, when I was on typically Typhoon, would be I covered everything from new equipment coming through that needed to go through full qualification. So you dealt with suppliers, you dealt with procurement, you dealt with some other interfaces, you dealt with other systems, all the way up to modifications and clearances. So mine was very, very varied due to the engineering role and the background that I had. However, coming into us, a typical day could be an absolute plethora of things for any one of us that are working uh, with MBA systems because we are so diverse. Again, you just go through your apprenticeship and we're lucky in the fact that our training programmes are wide enough so that you get an appreciation of everything we have to offer, but narrow enough so that you have a level of understanding and you have some fundamentals and some, some basic training in all the different areas. And then from my apprenticeship specifically, I could um, pick an exit role in somewhere that I'd had, uh, had a role in and that's where I qualified and came out of my time. Yeah, mine was the same. I chose what I wanted to do, but the good thing I, I think is really good about BAE is the fact that you can choose one role and then in a couple of years, if you don't like it, there's constantly opportunities to change your role. Yeah, You don't have to stay in one place for the rest of your life. You can go wherever you want. Yeah. From a training perspective, sort of training development, how much support at least you're the youngest on right here. I'm, I'm most definitely the eldest. <laughs> How much support do you feel you have training development wise? You're still on scheme, aren't you? Well, since September, I literally didn't even know what project management was. Like, I had no idea when I first joined. I've definitely grown a lot in the past few months. I've learned things that I didn't even know about. I know a lot about project management that I know now that I didn't know before. Um, I know things within IMT that I didn't think that I would know or learn. So that's quite interesting. Um, even just being in the business, you just pick up a lot of things, um, even if it's not necessarily in your um, team. So you get to speak to a lot of different people, definitely better with my social skills, um, definitely better with my Excel using Excel and um, using project as well, which is a bit hard at first, but once you get used to it, it's quite easy. So I'm um, definitely developing my hard and soft skills, which is quite good. So. Right. Sammy, how do you think you've been supported? I, I think in my eyes, a lot of what what you were supported on, I don't know, you, can't, you get what you give. So if there was always support available as long as like if you asked for it especially they were always really really helpful so like the early careers team who was in charge of the apprentices like they have a duty of care for all the apprentices so there's always someone that will be able to talk to you and help you through if you're struggling or if you don't like the team that you're in or something like that like there's always someone there that can help you out and i i worked hard and i got a lot of support back to me because i worked hard so whenever I needed help, someone was always there to help me. And I think it's just key to just remember that what you get, what you give. I agree. I, so I've, I've been out of my time now. I joined in 2006, so I've been, I've been in years. I'm, I'm off. <laughs> but <laughs> post my apprenticeship, um, I carried on my education. I completed a HND. I then completed a, a, an honours degree. I, I think that's it for education perspective. But internally like anything that I've needed to learn or understand or know for a job role perspective all the training courses that are put on for you and the, you, you're like you're fully supported throughout I don't think I've ever had a placement or an area where I felt like I was completely out of my depth and I'd, I couldn't deliver anything and as well as having the formal training and development you do have the people that you work with 
they can always help. Like you don't always need formal courses, but I do think we are we are quite well supported. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. From a sort of confidence and skills perspective, Sammy, do you think you are you growing? Are you, are you developing? Yeah. yeah, definitely. I was a. Uh... I remember the first day walking in, I was terrified of everyone around me, but now I'm excited to like meet new people and work with new people and learn new skills. So throughout the apprenticeship, I got really confident just like working with new teams. And I gained a lot of confidence when I was like speaking in front of other people. So you do a lot of presentations just within the business, you have to. And I was really nervous the first time I did one, but now like, I didn't blink an eyelid. Just stuff like that. It's just it everything kind of develops as long as like when your team's walking you around you and stuff and then I also got a really good development of the business during the entire apprenticeship as well. Within BAE systems 95% of our apprentices do choose to stay with us once they've completed it's not something that we're tied into we're not we're not like that as I believe some companies are we are once you finish your apprenticeship um, you're offered a role and that's it. With us having such um, a high retention rate and these do you, do you think or do you know why? Are we all right? I mean, you're first year, so you're experiencing it through a pandemic period. When I joined in, there was no lockdown, no pandemic. So <laughs> life was a bit less complicated. Yeah. Um, well, I think people, once you join the business, you know how good it is. I think that that's how it works, really, because if you're not in it, you don't really know much about it. But once you're actually in, you're like oh you get a lot of benefits you get things like flexi time you get um a really supportive team who's there for you all the time you won't just be left on your own some apprenticeships um they might not be as supportive but I think in BAE there's always going to be people who want to support you and help you grow that's why early careers are there so you always have people who are looking after you if you're finding something particularly hard um you can literally just speak to your, your literally your placement manager or your line manager um, or someone in early careers and they'll be there to help you. Um, I think when you have support like that from day one, people don't really want to leave because they realise, wait, it's actually a really good company, you're getting lots of support. Um, it's really successful as well. Um, so... I don't think people would want to leave after the four or five years. But, yeah, not I haven't speak to a lot of people who really want to leave after. Everyone who I spoke to wants to stay on because it's such a good role. So. Do you agree, Sammy? Have you ex had some, some experiences? Yeah, yeah, I do agree. I think a lot of people stay because, firstly, there's good job roles that are available. i um, not going to lie, it's good money that you get for your age <laughs> when you finish your apprenticeship. And then... When you get the role that you want, you have like a real sense of achievement. And then you're happy. If, if, it's a, if it's a job that you like, then you're doing what you like every single day, which is just ideal for anyone, I think. I think what I've noticed is that, obviously, when, since I've come out of my time, my full apprenticeship year, there's no one that I'm, I'm aware of that's left the business. But what I have noticed is, is that people have relocated because we do, we are a global company. You're not, where, wherever you come in and where you get your foot in your door at any of our bases doing any of our apprenticeship schemes you can go anywhere training requirements um specific and if you needed to retrain that opportunity is also there and available and i find that for those who like I, one of my best friends has moved over to australia because she just got a bit bored of the uk and thought it's better weather and she just went from ba uk over to ba australia and i was like oh, okay bye <laughs> i just find that <laughs> you get that and you, you, i don't know if any of the companies that have them sort of global opportunities like we do and it does also help. I, I, I do think it it gives a strong sense of um, pride to work for the company and a bit. And the teams that I've specifically worked in have always been a bit sort of an extended family because they've always been quite small and quite nice. Even though the company is huge, I've been in teams that that aren't particularly big. So therefore, it's just a nice bit of comfort blanket, I suppose. <laughs> From um, so the journey. One of our questions. So the journey since I finished my apprenticeship is. Um, I finished my apprenticeship in wind tunnel. I was doing laser tracking and um, aerodynamics from little model aircrafts. It was quite interesting. I think really interesting. I really liked it. 
And then I moved over into an area called General Systems. And General Systems is, if you imagine um, the aircraft, you've got the computer bit and then everything else. I worked in the bit that was everything else. So the computers are the avionics element. I was in the General Systems bit, which is everything non-avionic. Um, I was equipment and systems engineer within crew escape. So I covered the, the pilot's seat, the pilot's clothing, the pilot breathe apparatus. Really enjoyed all of that. Then I moved over into electrical power generation, which is one of my fundamental backgrounds because my BTEC after I left high school was um, electrical electronic engineering. So that's how I've come up. So I'm an electrically biased person. So I really enjoyed that. And now I've moved luckily over into temper. So quite a varied, wide spanning um area really and covering a, a, a vast amount of engineering Sammy you're quite recently out of your time ish yeah yeah so I finished my apprenticeship in March last year um, and then the final six months of my apprenticeship is when you spend in your final role and that was I was in the CAFM team which is computer radar facilities management which is doing a lot of drawings of buildings and updating site maps and stuff like that and then after I finished my apprenticeship and got my qualifications, I actually moved into the governance team, which is a lot of telling people what to do, and I love that. <laughs> but now I've currently moved into the energy side of things, and this is a lot more interesting because it, it basically is just coming up with ways to save energy on sites, and it's quite fun reading reading stuff about it and stuff like that. But um, I'm actually in the process of applying to do a facilities management degree part-time at UCLan. So I'm, I'm doing that at the minute, so that's like my future, and I'm hoping that I don't become a specialist so that I can kind of just like bounce between different aspects of the facilities management team which is a good way to actually go into becoming a manager in 10 to 15 years time so that's that's kind of how I see my long-term career. Mm. What do you think coming into the company and Anissa I'll direct at you first has surprised you the most? Um, how big it is definitely because <laughs> Honestly, I didn't think it was that big of a company, but um, literally all up and down the country, so many BAE bases across the world, so many BAE bases. Um, I didn't know that they had so many bases in like Australia. I think there's some in America, Canada as well. There's literally everywhere. I'd didn't think it would be that big so yeah Sammy what surprised you the most it probably similar um one thing that did surprise me was what, how fast my apprenticeship went I wasn't <laughs> expecting it to end that quick I don't think the pandemic helped though because that made it come to a halt and stop it felt like but um in terms of how big the company is that that is that is surprising when you don't, if you don't know much about BAE then you don't have no clue and when you come in it and they start telling you about all these opportunities in Saudi Arabia and Australia it gets really interesting <laughs> definitely that's really good um do you have any sort of outstanding achievements that come to mind of anything that you've achieved so far within the company yeah definitely yeah I um I was actually very very fortunate throughout my apprenticeship so earlier I was talking about what you give what you get. You know, where you get what you give anyway. And I worked hard on my apprenticeship and approved it because I was actually asked to go to Qatar with, for 11 days. And I got to go to a festival where basically Qatar celebrate their own country for 11 days straight in December. And because BAE are supplying them with aircraft, we get invited to kind of show off what we're doing. And I got to meet the King of Qatar, which was like really exciting. And I'd never thought that would happen to me. If you asked me 10 years ago, what are you doing? I never thought I'd be like, oh, I'm going to Qatar with the business and getting paid to go. <laughs> so that that was a massive achievement for, for my apprenticeship, definitely. And then also just finishing the apprenticeship and getting a role that I that I enjoy. That was a big achievement for me. Nice. Anise, you're quite new. Do you have any big achievements just yet or anything that you're setting your sights on to achieve? Um, so I definitely want to move from where I am now to to another base just to see what they're like just to compare them see what ones i like more see what they have to offer um so i don't want to just stay in one place um maybe um i was speaking about this on my first week um one of the directors um during our induction week were basically saying about how these days it's really easy to move up about how I said earlier so um, after 
the scheme, it'll probably take like five or ten years, he mentioned, to become a director. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a bit generous or not, but probably something like that, yeah. Good call to have. <laughs> I had, um, I've got loads of achievements, like I said, just because I've been here so long, but one of like, the big standouts for me is, um, if any of the, the audience have heard of it, I was lucky enough to be selected to be part of World Skills, and BAE Systems are, do put competitors through the squad pool for um, World Skills, we can we can compete, compete in it, and I was really lucky that I got to represent the UK in London in 2011, which was like, unreal. And since then, I'm still involved. I'm now one of the performance coaches for World Skills, and uh, I support Team UK all the way through. But it's something that, again, it's like the the worst secret we have because people who don't know how big we are and how wide reaching we are as a company don't understand that we do also have these opportunities that aren't just linked to the BA Systems company. We've got a big network outside of that as well. And I was also really, really excited. Um, I got to work over in Saudi Arabia for a month. And working in Saudi Arabia is was absolutely fascinating because we support uh, products over in the UK and to see it, how it's supporting other countries and other environments. So from an aircraft perspective, Coningsby is a lot different to Saudi Arabia. There we desert, we're not. So how we support the aircraft like, was really, really fascinating. And, and I managed to spend a month out there, which is really good. Travel-wise, we do get to travel. I think the other ladies have also mentioned it. I've definitely got my fair share of travelling out. And I even, I've even managed to get to Australia and not being smug, but <laughs> we've done a bit of travelling around here and it's the opportunities that are there and available for you. From a an achievements perspective, no, you've done your achievements. Um, I'll go back to challenges. So we're women. We're women that's in a STEM career and a, a manufacturing environment. We, co- we cover engineering and manufacturing as well as everything else that we cover within BA systems. What do you think of the challenges? Um, so, Anise, I'll start with you. Nice and fresh-faced. <laughs> um, some of the challenges. Mm. Well, I think that definitely most things would be a probably more male-targeted outside, if that makes sense. So things like engineering, project management, definitely more male dominated but I think as the years go on definitely seeing in the apprenticeships it's becoming more female dominated so I think last year there was a lot of boys on our on the first year team um now in a, when I first joined so in September most of us are girls <laughs> there was probably about two boys not to put any boys off but um yeah so I think slowly more women are coming into STEM roles in VAs. That's quite nice to see. Sammy, what's your opinion on it? Uh, so when I when I started, there was about around about 50 apprentices and six of us were women. So I always had it in my head um, that I would have to work harder to prove that I was worthy of the role that I was in. And I did work hard and I got where I got. Well, I got where I am because I worked hard. So, in terms of challenges, if if you don't don't see it as a challenge, see it as an opportunity to prove yourself and the fact that you're worthy of being in this role. But that's how I kind of saw, saw it, and I, I, with that approach, I was able to complete everything that I needed to do, um, get many opportunities throughout the apprenticeship that I'll look back on and love. And then just get the role that I wanted to. Why would you encourage others to come into a career into STEM? And let me continue with you if you'd like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a really good area to go into because it can be challenging, but it can also be really rewarding, like when you're doing your job and then finishing your work day with a sense of achievement is always a really nice feeling. And STEM itself, just STEM subjects, have so many opportunities all around the world. And if you show that you're passionate about your role within STEM, then it just reflects in the work that you do. And then it, it, it just gives you a really good sense of fulfilment. I think. Why would you encourage others to come into a STEM career? STEM is definitely something that's important these days I think it's becoming more and more important STEM is 
really what makes the world go around. So I think that it's definitely one of the more important in demand careers. So BAE definitely acknowledge that and make room for more engineering and project management and then even some business apprenticeships. So um, we definitely recognise that. Um, but even in our apprenticeship scheme, we're told to apply for our STEM learning ambassadors. So most of us apply to be a STEM ambassador. So we're all most of us are STEM volunteers. So that's something that we do in our first year as well. So that can help to push us in STEM more. Help spreading the word and getting the word out of STEM subjects. From an apprenticeship point of view, why would you encourage others to go down the apprenticeship route rather than other routes that are and options that are out there? Uh, well, I'd definitely encourage you to look into apprenticeship because firstly, you get paid to learn. What more could you ask for? <laughs> and you also just get really, really incredible qualifications at the end of it. Anise? Um well, you're getting you're getting essentially a paid degree paid for degree you're getting paid to do the job you're getting work experience that is actually quite hard to find I think work experience everyone comes out of uni and they're like oh it's fine it's easy to get a job um but the work experience that we're getting whilst other people are at uni is something that I think it's probably the most one of the most important things that you come out with the apprenticeship from so the work experience that you get can't be topped I think and then you always have a supportive team definitely apprenticeships a lot better than just going to uni and then putting yourself in a lot of debt as well so I don't know if you two have found this but I found that there's some things that I've learned off the people that I've worked from the teams that I've been a part of and they things that you would never pick up in education you would never yeah. pick up in academia and it's just life and work experiences and it's not something that you can write down it's something that you have to like pick up yourself and sort of work around and just be involved in, and party to I think yeah, definitely yeah yeah I think yeah I agree you can't really put pounds and pennies on it but I don't really enjoy it so do you and I'll go uh, each of you Anise, do you have any advice for women who are looking for an apprenticeship within BA systems? Um, I've, I did a careers fair uh, a few months ago. So um, a lot of females, a lot of women, didn't really want to come to our stall just because it was BAE. And I think when people see BAE systems, they just think engineering. And I think a lot of girls are quite put off from that. Um, but there's a lot more things other than just engineering and even if you're a woman I don't think that you should feel that you can't go into an almost male dominated area um, I definitely encourage anyone any women to come into BA systems um, and to pick up a STEM career so it'll definitely it's definitely worth it 100% so yeah Sammy do you have any advice yeah um I'd, I'd probably say if you're looking for an apprenticeship program and you're genuinely passionate about that it's just going to reflect when you do an interview and when you apply for it and when when BAE see that you're passionate about something they really like that because yeah. they don't want someone who's like just there for qualifications or money because BAE is a company that knows its future sits with its apprentices so they want to know that you will enjoy your career within the business and actually give back in time and, and that's just what they like so if you are going to apply for something I think that's my advice just make sure that you show that you're passionate about it and the company will will see that yeah I'd like to build on Anissa's point in that we are recognized at the moment as quite a male-dominated environment and a male-dominated um career path just because we are BA systems we're mainly engineering but we're not just engineering We've got commercial, we've got legal, we've got finance, we've got business management, we've got project management, we've got project control. We're an absolute vast myriad of all different careers. And although our preference is always STEM, because we are STEM ambassadors, all three of us, um, 
you don't just have to worry about, oh, well, I'm not an engineer, therefore I can't apply. Like our apprenticeship schemes are quite diverse and we have, you just need your foot in the door to come to the company to realise how big it is, how lovely it is and how easy it is to um, progress and move around. It's not that scary, I promise you. Been there years. Definitely not that scary. <laughs> but we would like more women. <laughs> <laughs> please, <laughs> please apply. <laughs> yeah. I think from a panel perspective, we're pretty much wrapping up now. So we do have a slot for questions and answers. Yeah, we do. And you've had loads of questions come through, but in the background, um, there's been such a good job done of answering them. And I, honestly, I can't explain how um, well put together your panel discussion has been as well, because there's so many questions that this is National Friendship Week. I've been running these events all week and there's so many questions that get asked because they haven't been covered in a discussion or, or so on. But you've literally spoken about everything. It's been brilliant. Um, but I do have some questions um, that I'd like to put to you. Um, some um, have you've mentioned and touched on them in the panel discussion, but I don't think there's any harm sometimes in kind of revisiting them for people who maybe missed out or joined us a little bit late. Um, so we'll start up, off with um, a question from Yasmin, which is how much did you know about BAE before or, or even the industry before you applied? Well, go I on. knew, I'll go mean, first, I knew nothing. I'm not going to lie to you. In Liverpool, BAE is a non-existent company. I had never heard of it until one of my teachers came to me. knew that I wanted to do apprenticeship. She was like, oh, I saw this advertisement. Do you want to, do you want to apply to this and have a look into it? So I did. And then I, one, once I found out about it, I was like, that sounds really, really good. And then I've learned a lot since being here. So I, I honestly knew nothing until I joined. And Ace? Well, I knew that it was a really good company and it was obviously um, quite talked about on, in the media. Um, but I didn't know as much as I know now, obviously, but yeah. I, I personally didn't know too much. So I'd, um, I was at college when it was like a local careers fair in our college. And this is one of the highest, uh, the biggest employees in our area because I'm in the Northwest. And I didn't know too much about it. So they were there, they, were, they had a school, I had a flyer. I did a bit of Googling and I applied for the apprenticeship immediately. Brilliant, that's great. Um, and. I mean, what happens after an apprenticeship? Sammy, you spoke about the fact that, you know, the world is your oyster, you can go and you can be anything that you want to be. But, um, you know, what does the average, what, what is the lifespan of the average apprentice? Do most people stay with you? Are you guaranteed a job? Um, what's the outcome? Um, well, if you, a lot of teams like to stay in contact with you if you show that you work hard and you like their their roles and then that's how I kept in contact with my facility management team like I kept going out obviously this was before COVID so I kept like having coffees with some of them and meeting up with them and making sure they remembered me face so when I got into the team and I was uh, guaranteed a role and um, that's when it's kind of you have to plan your future then and what you see happening be you like to have like a five-year plan in place at all times to see what where you want to progress and how you want to achieve that and if you want to do any more further education and stuff like that um i think that's the best way to answer that it's quite a difficult question <laughs> yeah, well, that's a brilliant answer thank you um does anyone else have anything to add to that one yeah we do like to have um personal development plans if you're in education they might call it like a continuous can something continuous development we like to call it like a personal development plan I like to um encourage that post your apprenticeship you find areas that you're interested within and then we the company helps support you and get you into them them roles accordingly obviously it's supply and demand we can't put you in an area which is absolutely saturated with employees but we'll get you a best fit brilliant that's really helpful um are stem subjects essential to have to well essential to have to be able to apply no so um when i did my a levels i did english literature psychology and sociology but it depends on if, if you want to do it i think it's um, different for project management you don't have to do stem 
Okay, thank you. Um, this will be a question, an easy one to answer. Is this something that's offered every year? So if people are here watching and they're not, not quite yet at school leaving age or they're not quite ready to apply, but they're thinking, oh, I kind of really want to do this for the future. Is it something that they can revisit and come back to you, you know, in, your, in a year or so to come? Absolutely. Um, I think you might be able to answer that a bit better. As far as I'm aware, every year, every year we take an apprenticeship. Brilliant. Yeah, I mean, the answer is yes. Uh, definitely yes. If if you don't something, you think it's something that you're ready for this year, then you can definitely uh, look at how uh, if you want to apply next year. There's no there's no limit. Um, um, your time essentially, you can apply whenever you feel ready. For, and for whatever scheme you feel ready for and just on the stem side of things as well there are the criteria against which um you're measured is on against each vacancy on the website when you look into it so that will tell you exactly what you need in terms of qualifications and whether that's stem or not or maths or not or whatever it may be it will all be detailed on there Wonderful. That's really helpful. Um, one for um, the apprentices here. How do you manage your time working and studying at the same time? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I used to talk to my teams when I first started the placement and I'd say, I want Thursday afternoon where I can kind of just sit at my desk and do any outstanding work that I've got or any outstanding apprentice work. And usually if you make it known at the beginning that you've got a lot of apprentice work and studying to do at the same time as the placements, they usually really understand them and they let you take that time to do it. Any more for any more on that one? I've completely finished my education. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going back. So I think that yeah definitely letting your placement manager know that you have work to do usually they're quite supportive and they're understanding and they'll give you time to do if you have any work that you need to do um it can be a lot but as long as you keep up with your work then um, and you always have to do, even if you're stuck on something um, I will add that after your apprenticeship, if you do want to carry on with the further in higher education, your placement are, will give you a day off a week for it. For any exams, you get like the, the exam time half a day and you'll get half a day before if there's any revision that you need to do. They are really, really good because they do appreciate and understand that education is really important. People do want to continue learning and that, that does carry on after I did my degree where I completed my apprenticeship. Wonderful, thank you. Um, what are the assessment, well, interview and assessment centres like, and what tip would you give based on your own experience? I'll, I'll kick it off. I, I've been through it, and I now sit on the other side of the table. I do do some of the um, assessments as we get them through. You've been looking to at the moment during the pandemic. We we've been conducting virtual um, interviews for it one big big tip that i will say is please just research the company that you're applying for whether that's ba systems or any company that you're applying for because you do often get questions around the company and it, we really know if you've not googled us and it's the easiest thing in the world but it's one of the big things that trips people up research the company that you're applying for and make sure that you understand some of their products what they're offering what their apprenticeship schemes are and that, that isn't just for BAE, that's, that's across the board. Can I can I ask a question about that? Because um, what I think is quite interesting to know is, from you sitting on the other side of the table, if somebody has done their research and it's clear that they have, but they have genuine questions about the organisation, mm -hmm. things that maybe uh, they don't quite understand or they've, they've wanted to find an answer to and they haven't been able to, do you object to a question being asked like that? Is, does it go no. against somebody? No, so we do. There's a, we we can answer questions as long as we're we're clear to do so. It's nothing that's too sensitive from a project perspective. We can answer questions. Brilliant. And what about um, you guys, the people that are going to be through it most recently? What what would your say your experience was? And if there was somebody out there thinking, right, I need a top tip for somebody that's literally been walked in their shoes, what would you say? 
Can't do any. Can't do any. It's <laughs> the most recent. It's a while ago, um, you know. So I did mine, all of it was online. Um, so what I did beforehand, I did do some research. I did as much as I could. Um, and I wrote down lots of different things about the company. So I knew what I had to, in my head to speak about as well. So um, it wasn't, it's not, I don't think it was that bad. I think it was definitely better than the things that I had to do to use that content. But there was, an, there's an, there was an interview that was on the phone. kind of um, softer skills would you say so things that don't involve an education um, would help somebody stand out in an application um, what do you what are your thoughts on that people who um, are involved in clubs maybe have got a part-time job if they can like that with their education people who interact with other people because then um, it helps them build their communication skills up it means that the a, a, a better well-rounded person people it's always noticeable and recognizable on a cv if people do extra volunteer work with things like the duke of edinburgh because it helps it shows us that they've, they've been involved in problem solving activities that they've done teamwork that they, that they have got communication skills that they are working on and building upon brilliant that's really helpful um helen smith has just popped a question in the chat and i would encourage anybody else now who's, who's out there who's thinking oh, i really have a question to ask we've got five or ten minutes left in the session um, but helen says thanks for putting on this session do you do any school visits or presentations at all don't know whether fiona that might be a question for you uh i think um I don't actually get involved in the sessions in schools and things, so it's not something that I know if we're doing this year, unfortunately. Um, I think you can, you can um, register a request through our website, through the bbasystems.com uh, website, and then if how it was pre-pandemic was that we, we did offer like road shows up and down uh, the British Isles and we did cover Scotland up and down um, to the south of England. Not every school that applies is, is sometimes on the roadshow, but since the pandemic, I know we've been doing virtual events, but I don't know if we've been to, into any schools physically. That's there you go. There's, we... there's been a response in the chat, actually, from somebody um, oh, okay. uh, that, that, that we are doing school visits and have virtual open evenings as well. So, I don't, Helen, I think um, there may be, that it may be an instance that somebody can contact you um, directly if you, you're interested in those. Brilliant, thank you. Um, I think the, the questions are, are slowing down a little bit now, so I think what I would like to end on, um, and this goes to um, you know anybody really who wants to answer this, I think there's a lot of people out there who will be listening to this and thinking that it sounds amazing, your stories are brilliant, it's extremely inspirational. We've got people who are at all, all ends of the spectrum in terms of how new you are and how experienced you are. But there's something missing where they, maybe it's a lacking in confidence or they're still not quite ready to, to just take that leap and apply. What words of advice or encouragement would you give to those out there that are in that position um, and need that just extra word of encouragement to take the plunge to apply? I'd probably just say go for it. Like, just believe in yourself. Um, there's no harm in applying at all if you get it then bonus bonus do you know what i mean like all you've got to do is apply for it and then if, if you unfortunately don't get it you've got the experience then where you can use that experience and that confidence to apply for another apprenticeship or apply again for the next year because i know someone who didn't get it until the third time they applied <laughs> so it took them a few years but they kept going at it and they got the confidence to to feel good enough to go and do it again and actually achieve it and get it so i'd probably just say if, if you don't feel confident enough do more research 
um, find out if it, it's definitely something you want to do. Because if you're not like confident enough for it, it probably means that you don't think you're ready for it, but you might be more ready for it than you think. So just go for it and, and just, just do your best, <laughs> I suppose. Something I will say, and it's something that I've had experience with, and this, oh, this is only a woman's point of view, we're incredibly hard on ourselves and we don't think we can do as much as what we actually can. So please just, it sounds really like cheesy and a bit cliche, but you are as good as you think you are and absolutely just have the confidence to apply and apply for several different routes and several different apprenticeships. And if you don't, if you get all of them, oh my God, you're going to have a tough, a tough decision picking them out. But if you, if you are unsuccessful, as Sammy said, you can always reapply. It's not the complete end of the world. It, it's an experience for you and it's, and it's good life experience to, to go through it. I know people who did get in first time round but did get in second or third time round. And, and I know people who have done it and it, it's not been for them. But I know others that have come and absolutely thrived and they've got really, really successful careers. But we just have a bit of confidence in yourself and your abilities. Yeah. I definitely agree. Like, it won't hurt to apply, so might as well. There's been people who have gone to uni, um, tried to get a job, couldn't get a job, and then they do a full circle back to one of our apprenticeships to try and get a job with us and get on the apprenticeship scheme. So that's something that's a bit common as well that we seem to find. So it doesn't hurt to apply. Um, so you might as well give it a go. <laughs> okay. I like that. Thank you. That's really helpful. Um, also, behind the scenes, there's some links um, to resources in the chat as well. There's a phone number um, and email address. So if there's any other questions that you think of, everybody out there, that you haven't had the opportunity or the time to kind of think of it comes to you when the, the session's finished, or you get the recording and you think, mm, I could have done with answer it, asking that, then you can get in contact with the team here. Um, I think it's now my cue to start to wrap up the session. Um, from my perspective, um, first of all, I would like to thank everybody here. We had a turnout of over 700 people, which is brilliant. And it's clear that there's been a mix of apprentices to be potentially and also some teachers and careers advisors out there asking for it for resources. So thank you. And also to the team here, the panel. Um, it's been, like I said, there's been no stone unturned. You've covered absolutely everything. You've been so articulate, you, so inspirational. Um, I mean, I'm in the Northwest. I might apply. <laughs> <laughs> Come join us. <laughs> I don't think you want me in charge of these things. Um, but no, um, I think I'm going to hand over to you guys just for a, a final um, kind of word to say goodbye. But from my perspective, I'd like to thank you all. It's been brilliant. Yeah, lovely. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. If you do apply, I uh, wish you all the luck. <laughs> Hope to see you soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Bye.